you. I'd like to call to order the meeting of the City of Brisbane Successor Agency to the Brisbane Redevelopment Agency. Oh, I guess we had to close in memory the last meeting, right? Oh. And of Maxine Wilkin and John Fassett. So I'm sorry. Thank you. So, roll call, please. Note for the record that all board members are present. Thank you. So we have oral communications and for items not on the agenda, and I see no members of the public in the audience. So we'll move on to new business item A, and we can have the staff report, please. Well, it's at semi-annual time for doing the, the ROPs. This time we are looking at the ones, the payments we need for July to December of 2015. Uh, we are going to ask to pay back part of the CRAF for, for the redevelopment number two. However, the Department of Finance doesn't have their calculation spreadsheet done yet. So it is an estimate of $50,000 that I will put on it, but it depends on what the calculation will really come up with. Um, we are requesting $1,452,000 and or $452,970 it pays predominantly it pays for the um, the bond the debt service payments that are due for, for those six months we've also requesting $125,000 in admin fees I think I have correctly filled out the report of the cash balances this time so that we shouldn't come up surprised <coughs> like we did on the last one and we were over by three dollars on on the ROPs that we had to reconcile and that's about it the other one is that we were asking for the three hundred seventy six thousand four hundred eighty four thousand that the marina fund loaned to the successor agency to make sure we had the bond payments and just to let you know the of of course put it on a 40-day review thank you I, I had one question if i may for staff um on the ROPS 15-16A report of cash balances. It looks like on my copy it cut off at the bottom of line 10 and there looks like there's a hint of line 11. Is there a line 11? Yes, there is. Yeah. It is the ending available cash balance. And what is that final FAR column 8 <coughs> amount? Well, that one's a negative 502347. 502347. The column G has a positive 375,346. And column E has 126,607. So those are all good numbers. Yes. They tie to my trial balance. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. No, you can keep that. I don't need the extra copy. I just could see that there was a line 11 there and, and couldn't read it. Um, any? Yes. Yeah, I have uh, one issue that I've uh, already uh, raised with, uh, with the staff earlier today, and that has to do with the uh, administrative charge of $250,000. And though it is true that the uh, state law <clears throat> allows for that, it is also the case that uh, several members of the oversight panel, uh, including the lawyer, uh, are raising questions about whether we can really justify um, needing $250,000. And so at uh, prior oversight uh, panel meetings, we have uh, agreed to uh, reduce that amount and, and also to demonstrate uh, exactly what we're spending the money on. Uh, and so I would think that we need to make some adjustment there because basically we made a promise to the oversight panel that we would do that. And so to go ahead without responding at all, I think it's going to get us in some trouble at the oversight panel. So uh, I would like uh, staff to address that issue. Sure. Um, you know, I, I think the way to address that is that we would still leave a total outstanding debt or obligation of 250000 because that's what's required. That's the minimum that we're allowed. 
but we will go back and we will go look at staff time that we spent this year on the successor agency and if you remember there have been a few items that have been fairly time consuming we still had some issues with the bond we still had some issues with the dealing with the ROPS and the payment of the bond so my assumption is that we'll probably look at putting five percent of Betsy's time towards successor agency a couple of percent of my time a percent of Sherry's time for setting up the meetings and then also a percent of Clay's time in administration my guess is it'll come out to maybe twenty thousand dollars every six months at the most but less. So, hmm? less no total I mean if you think about it you know we're, it's not that much money so we're gonna probably instead of requesting 250,000 over the course of the year we might be down to requesting 50,000 by this time all is said and done so that will impact the general fund by two hundred thousand dollars less in revenues than we would have normally anticipate but on the positive side we'll get forty thousand dollars back through the formula of the waterfall so it will be a net impact on us of 160,000 and as we go through the budget process I'll deal with you know we'll bring that forward so we will reduce so we will reduce the amount that we're requesting to be paid on this obligation to a lower amount when we bring it to the oversight board uh, how, how next much, Thursday. what's the percentage of Betsy's time I'm, I'm you know my guess is probably close to five percent oh I thought uh, you said 80 two, over the t oh, no <laughs> <laughs> I mean it's you know if you know over the course of the of week in week out you know two three hours some weeks more some weeks less now if we were to add aggravation and stress <laughs> <laughs> Well, that, isn't that technically part of it? I mean, dealing with the yeah. state. Well, I mean, for an hour perspective, you know, it's probably two or three hours every week on average. But if you talk about the stress of dealing with the successor agency, with the stress of, you know, doing a bank wreck. <clears throat> How but, long I mean, are we going to have a keep, cash keep thing doing this? Hmm? What, what's the sunset date on this? Well, it's interesting. So the governor's budget is proposing that the county becomes the pay paying entity and remove the successor agency from paying any of the debt so if that's the case we our uh, we may lose the entire administrative budget when the government you know when that goes into effect so it probably does not hurt us at this point to start weaning ourselves off of that dollar amount and you know and I don't know how the governor's budget's going to go because there's a lot of <coughs> other cities you know have reimbursements of a million dollars or more still coming out of the successor agency so there'll probably be some political issues from some cities so I think that's the way we will we will go back tomorrow and come up with a better number I'll email it to the successor agency board but we will we'll inform the oversight board that we're going to reduce what we're requesting and then if we find out prior to the next ROPS that it's going to take us more time, we'll just increase the amount that we want on the second half ROPS. Okay, so what you're saying then, Stuart, is this 125 will be reduced. Be you're, you're, going to, you're going to make an adjustment. Right. To about... Uh, My guess it will probably be adjusted down 100,000. 100, yeah. So do, can we okay. um, adopt the ROPS with the with that amendment. changes? Or do we need to see the ROPS before we can? I think you can adopt that. it with saying that, you know, a maximum of 25000 and if it's less, I'll let you know. So, so you know, we make this change. I mean, this is so drastic. Um, and I know that we, you know, had the abilities to go up to the, the 250. I mean, what, what kind of response do you think, you know, when you have your oversight meeting? Th oversight board, I think, will be will be comfortable with us reducing it I mean they're there the community college district throughout the county is requesting the successor agencies to prove that it's costing you that much to run your successor agency the state law is ambiguous on that point state law says you have a minimum of 250,000 as approved by your oversight board and up to the amount it costs to run your successor agency the oversight board the community college is looking at it and saying it's the 
what it costs you to run your agency, not the minimum 250. You have to al you have to prove your allocation. I, you know, I mean, I, before you make a decision, I mean, I I, I know. Well, so Michael, well, how do you just well, I'm sure Michael's got some thoughts on it. Just one other aspect of what Stuart's saying is that the legal counsel to the successor agent or to the um, okay. oversight board. Um, essentially agrees with the argument that's being put forward by this uh, school, uh, the community college district. So I think to me that's, you know, it, it's great that the community college district has their point of view, but, you know, that's uh, one thing. But when our legal counsel is giving us that, yeah, that, that he agrees that that's the way the, the law works, then that, that's more determining to me. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. All right. All right. And Ray, do you feel that, if, having worked with the Oversight Board, do you think that this is something that will um, make them happy? Well, my only uh, um, concern was that we, we were not reducing it at all. I mean, we were asking for the full amount that the law presumably allows. Uh, but we had already discussed this at the Oversight Panel. And, and of course, it's the community college representative that's, that's leading the charge. But it's an all—they're doing it throughout the whole county, because whatever they can get those amounts reduced, of course, gets distributed <coughs> to all the school districts, including the community college district. So they're looking for every buck they can get. So I mean, that's kind of where it's coming from. Um, and then they asked if we could really justify spending two hundred fifty thousand, and and our staff said, well, we probably don't really spend quite that much. We we could uh, look at what percentage of people's times, and we would provide that information. So we've, we've made a promise at the oversight panel. Uh, and, and as Clay said, the, the, the legal uh, counsel to the oversight panel, who's a separate person, Gary Bone, mm -hmm. uh, agreed with the representative of the community college district. Uh, and he also said, you know, you need to justify you know, the document uh, how much you're actually spending on the administration of this activity. And so the reason I brought it up was that it, it had already been discussed at the oversight panel. The representative of the community college district made a push for it. Um, the, the legal counsel agreed. And so I figured we need to do something. Now, I don't know that we need to cut it back as much as yeah, Stuart is saying, it's, it's, but we need to do something. Thing. You know, we need it. We, we can't ask for the whole 250. But we I, certainly, you know, and, uh, I think if we could, you know, we wouldn't have to necessarily cut it back as drastically as Stuart is saying. I, I, but, but if whatever we do, we need to say it's, you know, it's 5% of somebody's time or 10% of somebody. We need to give some kind of documentation because that's what we promised to do. And the legal counsel is expecting us to do that. And, and in reality, when you think about, you know, 10 percent of, Be you know, even if we went to 10 percent of Betsy's time, you know, from a budget perspective, I think, you know, her total cost is probably 160, 170, including all benefits. So that'd be 17,000 a year. You know, you include a portion of my time, a portion of Clay's time, a portion of Michael's time, and a portion of Sherry's time. We're not, I mean, we're not going to get high up there you know we're not going to get close to the 250 and it's just a matter of you know we will go back we will do this analysis tomorrow we'll come up with the number and we'll put it we'll put it in for this one and then if we find that we have some unusual amount of work that we need to do we will in ask for an increase in the second ROPS that's due <clears throat> just to predicate it though I mean you were spending less time on it than you did at the beginning yes so it's being scaled back yes so, so that, i mean the impression out there i don't want to no. say that yes no i mean we've got we've done you know we've gone through the property disposition i mean there's been we've gone through this the initial changeover and all the work that needed to do the changeover from being a rda to a successor agency there was a lot of time that we spent at the beginning well, it's really happy to hear that the governor and the legislature and their infinite it wisdom that really saved the schools. <laughs> What's interesting is I haven't seen any figure as to how much money was, quote, actually saved by all this. Well, and when you and in reality, I think they're also playing this against their Prop 98 numbers. I'm not quite sure the school districts, the elementary, you know, K through 14 is actually benefiting. I think who's benefiting is the state's general fund when all is said and done. 
not nearly as much as they thought, but I think that's who's benefiting. And that's why they so, keep looking for every dime they can. So back to my original question. Um, can we leave it as an amount not to exceed, and what would that amount be to make the council I, I comfortable? I mean, I, I, we could say an amount not to exceed 50, and if I can figure out how I can justify 50 for this one, I will. Okay. Then uh, a motion to adopt the uh, ROPS payment schedule for July 1st, 2015, the 31st, not to exceed $50,000 for the administrative, administrative fee. Mm -hmm. So, okay. all those in favor? Aye. 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 Second. And that brings us to adoption of the successor agency minutes of January 15th, 2015. So move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And that is adjourned. That's the show, folks. Mm -hmm.